Erin, you weren't here last week, were you? You were? Why did I think that I didn't? I don't know why I thought. Yeah, I was here. Oh, I, my apologies. Um, oh, that's okay. You know what it was? We had a staff Zoom on Saturday, and that's why straight away. Uh, straight away that's why I forgot. Hi, Martin. Hi. So yeah, I that will be why it was completely. I'm I'm thinking I'm so used to doing this just for this um, that I was being confused. So I'm can I be heard? heard? Yes, you can, Chris. All right, I'm actually getting it on this stupid computer. <laughs> Um, so I'm just allowing people to come in and join. Hi, Rachel. Uh, so while I remember, I'm going to post something in the comments. Oh, that's the Zoom link. That's not what I wanted. Okay, I'm not going to. So um, you did a Zoom on Saturday, George. Yes, I was part of the um, the staff meeting that we had uh, that we always try and talk about things coming up and what's going on in the foundation. So, um, so Rachel, hello. And I can't remember the girl Katie's name. Oh, that's Karen. Karen. Hi, Karen. New Zealand, right? Yes, that's right. Hi, good yes. morning. <laughs> Sorry, that's... I'm just going to get the log on the fire, otherwise it's going to go out. <laughs> oh, how beautiful. So we have a small group. I'm waiting on Catherine joining because Catherine's really part of the, the conversation today so I'll kind of get started introducing and we are just a minute after 10 so um, to anyone well everyone's been here before but thank you and welcome to the Warren Files and I believe this is episode 17 I think that we are at really? already I know so we quite often try to think about what we want to talk about and what you guys will find engaging. So at this point, I want to kind of give a shout out to anyone that's watching in from right now and then later in the YouTube comments that if there's content you would like us to talk about in situations and cases and anything to do with the paranormal field um, or metaphysical that you want us to discuss, please let us know. Um, we're always trying to think of things that are the most engaging and the most appropriate. So um, we have a small group right now waiting on more joining. Um, don't know where can well, We can get started. Yeah, we this can This is still being recorded, so people will hear it. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is if you haven't seen the post on online is about um past life regression and the the kind of thoughts around that and past lives etc um and reincarnation also that's something that we're also going and we myself chris and catherine all have very different views on um reincarnation and past life regression as well so i'm going to hand over to chris at this this point because he's got some really interesting things to discuss about his grandfather and that kind of and then i've got a very different view on things um which was, is always an interesting topic so chris <coughs> over to you all right so uh thank you everyone for joining us this evening and um i'm gonna ask if you want to contribute if you have things to share please do um, one of the things George alluded to and what I'd like to ask is also um, I'd like to do a, um, a whole question and answer program maybe in a week or two. Um, so get your questions ready. Please post them for us. You know, send them in uh, privately. So we have some idea of where this is going to go and if there's a, a demand for it. Um, I think it'd be a lot of fun to really get you more involved. So let's talk about reincarnation. When I was 16 years old, my grandfather um, thought that I was old enough to handle learning how to hypnotize people and do past life regression. Um, in retrospect, that's like handing a loaded gun to a kid, and I'm not so sure I would have uh, followed in his footsteps. It certainly made me very popular with the young ladies at high school. Um, but he did it by first doing it on me. And I apologize, one of our three cats keeps going on the roof, and that's where he is now, complaining that he's on the roof again. <laughs> this would be, I think, the 11th or 12th time this week. Okay, so, hi, nice to see you here, Catherine. Um, 
what what I had discovered um, in that first session was that I had been alive in the 1920s, that I was falling in love with someone, and that's really all I got out of it. I, I, I knew I was somewhere in the United States, I was in the Midwest, but it wasn't until later that, and I, I mean, possibly four or five years later, that it was really weird. It was just like a bolt out of the blue came to me and I had all of these memories. I remembered World War I. I remembered being in France. I remembered the mustard gas rolling in on the ground in, in the nighttime. Um, I remember who I was with and it's somebody that I've, I've been with in this lifetime. Uh, I remembered who I married and checked all of this out. I also, in a separate uh, past life regression uh, session, I remembered that by the 1950s, I was now a uh, deputy or a sheriff, and I was killed in the line of duty. Before that, I had actually um, been a farmer. So it was it, all of that came through. I've done plenty of past life regressions with people and checked to see. All right, we're here. Good. Um, check to see if um, these things could be found out historically. And yeah, they checked. What I've also found in my research, <clears throat> children especially, will have vivid memories of past lives. Um, there are some really, really famous uh, examples of this. There's a young man who, um, by the time he was three, recreated an entire cockpit of a fighter jet inside his, uh, or high, fighter plane, inside of a closet at his house. He knew his name in his past lifetime. He knew that he died at the Battle of Midway. This is three years old, four years old. And it turns out that person really did exist, really did die there. And his recreation of his cockpit was spot on, perfect. Um, there was a famous case of a Chinese girl who was adamant that she had to go visit this other village nearby. And when she went there with her parents who were, you know, why are we doing this, but we're going to, she walked right up to this man and said, this is my husband, that is my child. This is where I died. That kind of experience is not unusual. Um, I want to get into the discussion of soulmates and other things, but I'm going to save that to a little bit later in our conversation. And I am now going to turn this over to George. George, take it away. So all of that fascinates me. And I know everyone is kind of the same because we're all looking quite um, very intently listening to what Chris is saying. And it's really interesting to hear that there's these people who have these experiences where, <laughs> where they're having the experiences that they're so real that they can actually, go and actually give factual detail of these you know going to the village and the husband and the child so for me what's always been really difficult for me to understand about you know reincarnation and past life is that my belief for a long, long time as a medium is that when someone passes over, I communicate with that person. So how can then that person, if I'm talking to them in the spirit world, i.e. let's use my grandmother, for example, if my grandmother's in the spirit world and I can communicate to her or other mediums can speak to her, then how does that make sense that then she would be reborn? So this really- I have an answer for that. Okay, go. No, I'll wait. Go okay. Ahead. So I really battled with this because people would come to me and say to me, you know, do you believe in reincarnation? And I'm like, nope, absolutely not. And I really, until four years ago, really had quite a strong pushback against it. Because for the simple reason that if I'm talking to your dead father, then it's how would you... Oh, obviously my phone thinks we need to talk to it. Okay. Um, I don't actually know whatever I said to trigger that off. I tried to see, but it disappeared. Um, 
maybe that's my grandmother trying to talk to me. Um, I'm just being funny. Um, so it kind of makes me interested, like if I'm speaking to your dead father, then how can he be reborn as another person? So, so four years ago, I met a woman, a medium who changed my life and my, my viewpoint on mediumship. I really had all the jigsaw pieces, but she was able to kind of put the pieces together and for me to have my Oprah Winfrey aha moment. And her name is Mavis Patilla. She has been in the movement for over 50 years. She, uh, her knowledge is second to none. She's still working to this day as a medium globally. She's 80 years of age. She does not stop. stop. She's an absolute trooper. And her devotion to the spirit world is second to none. So what she said to me was that people will live a life and they will choose to live that life until, so in the spirit world that is, so I'll make this more simple. They will live their life in the spirit world until the last person that they know that lived on the earth passes over. So for example, my grandmother, the youngest person she ever met was my daughter. So then my so grandmother my will pass to the other. Sorry, I'm just muting Heather. Um, my grandmother will continue to communicate with the family and the loved ones until my daughter then passes over. And then that's the last person that she is able to give physical evidence to of eternal life, because it's the spirit world's job to prove that they're here. And then she can choose as she put, goes through the, the kind of the, the stages in the spirit world to become a, a guide or to become a, a healer, or as we call them, angels. Um, or then ascend to this higher being where she can then get to the point where she then is reborn. But that is a choice of the people in the spirit world. And that takes a long, long time. I just said, made that sound really simple in a so short sentence. But when Mavis explained it to me that we all have still have that choice in the spirit world, that to me was fascinating. Um, and that that's how it works. So that kind of then made me believe that reincarnation is a true thing and it's valid and it, it happens. It just happens differently than I expect it to be that like Jesus died and he was reborn, you know, so many days later, etc. you know. So that was always my mindset of reincarnation. And so I've never done past life regression. I would be fascinated. I have a really busy mind, so I don't know how I would shut off. Because um, people say, you know, as a medium, how do you shut off? And I'm like, well, they know when I want to work. And, I, you know, we have an agreement and I do my stuff and I work and then I'm not working. And that's it. Because I've had discipline for 20 years. So, closing my mind off? Yeah, the cat agrees. Um, so, closing my mind off to past life regression, that would be an interesting one for me. But anyway, moving on to Catherine, who I believe you actually... Oh, wait a minute. I want to address what you said. Oh, yeah, yeah. Quickly. Okay. All right. So now what I'm about to say is not fact. This is theory. Likewise. But the, the spirit realm is not part of time and space. Yes. And if it's outside of this dimension, then it's also outside of time. Because without space, there is no time. That's, that's just simple physics. So when you're communicating with that soul, that soul is always there, is my theory. That yeah. soul is always there. Even when you're alive, you're still there. That's why when we talk about, you know, communicating with your higher self, that's kind of what I think that means. Um, so it is possible to be in other lifetimes and still be in the hereafter, in the spirit world. Um, well, after we're done uh, talking with um, Catherine, Karen, I want your opinion on that part and anything else, actually. Um, and Catherine, I'm going to turn it over to you next, and then I'm going to talk about soulmates. Okay, uh, the boys covered everything for me. I think I'm going to go home now. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, it's true. Okay, so it's true. <laughs> it's true that what George says that you 
the people that you've lived with in this life, they've got to do the cycle. They've all got to pass over so you can um, be able to reincarnate. And it's your choice to reincarnate into another life. Um, the time space up there into those realms with our time here, it is totally different. You could be up there for, say, thousands of years and no, no actually you could be down here for years and years and it could only be minutes up there and it's vice versa so when you choose to reincarnate um you've got you can when you go up there um you stay up there you get healed by the universal healers um you spend time with uh, your clan because your clan's up there your family your souls, your, that's what they call, they call your family. So your, your spirit, soul, family. So um, the reason why you reconnect is by your own choice, which George said as well. And everything gets wiped out from your memory. So we've got the Akasic um, library or the Akasic pools, what, that's what they call it. So once you, you do your transition and you die, you do your transition to go over into that, um, into that realm, into the astral realm. Um, everything gets downloaded. All the information you've gathered from this life gets downloaded there. So what happens is um, when you decide to come back to reincarnate, some of that memories are still imprinted on your DNA. So, you know how you, you do a format on a computer, but there's always fragments stuck in there. That's exactly with our DNA. That's why when we reincarnate, we have deja vu of going to different places, people that we meet and we think, oh my God, I know this person. Um, or, yeah, things like that. So, anything else you want me to add? <laughs> I do, actually. I, I, for me, this is a fascinating conversation because it isn't all agreeing, and I love that. It's, it's about time. Um, I don't agree um, with the part of it. And I don't think it's a truth most of the time. Um, we have a progression of the soul. And in my, this is just, you know, I've spent my whole life looking into this, trying to understand this. For me, what I've discovered, or what I believe anyway, is that you go through a lifetimes with a beehive of soulmates, not just mm -hmm. one or two, but these, this again, as they both said, this is your family. This is your real family. And they're there to help lift you up and you're to, there to help lift them up. Uh, your interactions help you to learn unconditional love so you can get closer to God. However you think of God, God at, at the core of it is love. And our purpose on earth is to let go of attachments, let go of the things that are holding us to the earth. And if we can't, that's karma. That's what pulls us back to earth. Those are the things we have to work out lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Whether or not, what role you take in the hereafter. That, I believe, is free will, and that is your choice, and it takes a long time to do because you must be prepared for those roles and to figure out where you're going and how you can help. Um, I've seen that in many different spiritual belief systems where the souls take hundreds of years to prepare themselves to do whatever their task is, whether it be a healer or to come back here in spirit form to help in some way. So that's that is what I've found and what I what I've been led to believe. Well, you said the magic word, free will. So as a human yes. spirit, you've got the choice to either stay up there and either become a healer or ascend to different levels or come back. But if you are not done with what you need to do, you're never gonna get as close as you could get. Yes, that's the lesson so you, that you've you, got to you, learn. You'll be, you'll be there. Yes, you're right. But you can only get so close to that bright light without getting burned if you're not totally prepared and you've let go of everything that can burn. 
if that's a, a good analogy. Uh, um, that's why the lesser souls, the evil souls, are so far away from God, and they're so black that they they hide from the light. And it's going to take them forever to work all that out, all of that baggage and that evil. Uh, and m many times they don't. True. Uh, Karen, you want to chime in here? I don't know. It's, I mean, it's a fascinating discussion, and I. I bought a book when I was probably about 11, which touched on uh, near-death experiences and past lives. So I've been interested in this for a decade, I care to remember. Um, but you know, I just remember when my son, who's now 15, was a very little boy, um, incredibly, incredibly bright, but he used to often come out with um, the phrase, when I was a man, when I was a man, and he might talk about a car that he had or something. And there was never any real specific detail that we could go and research to um, validate what he was saying. But I mean, he's exceptionally, exceptionally intelligent. He's not the sort of person that would say something like that if it wasn't exactly what he meant to say. He was very precise with his language. So he, he used to say that quite often as a little boy. Interestingly, a few months ago, he had an incredibly vivid dream which he's written up for me, which hasn't actually given me the write up yet. But, um, and he talked about having this, um, almost like a memory in this dream of having been a young man on a beach with a whole load of his friends and that he had been captured somewhere and he was being marched off and that he knew that he was going to die and they were going to be shot. And he said that in the dream, his little sister, um, obviously this lifetime, had come up to him and she'd given him a stone or something, which I think she'd intended it to, um, to help him in some way. Maybe he was supposed to use it to defend himself or whatever. But um, he was clearly really, really bothered by this dream or this memory, such that he actually took the time and trouble to write it all up. And, and when he told me at the time, I thought that sounds very much like a, a past life memory um, and in fact I actually found a historical event which which linked him quite closely with the description that he gave me of what happened um, but I thought that was really fascinating as he um, going back to, sorry my apologies sorry, sorry, say again. I was just saying is he sensitive to this kind of thing he is quite sensitive yeah I mean he's had, he's had a few experiences of um, sensing things, seeing presences as well. He's had some shadow people experiences too. So uh, yeah, yeah, he is. He definitely has some abilities there, I think, for sure. Sorry, continue, uh, please. Sorry, no, that's no, okay. Uh, our daughter is only six. We've always been struck by her resemblance to my grandmother and my father's mother. And, and it's quite striking. And my dad, had just made kind of a, a comment in jest to me in passing about you know maybe maybe, it, maybe she is actually his mother um, and then weirdly one day I mean, it's not something that we ever said in front of her but then one day maybe a year or so ago she actually said to my dad what is your mother and we were like whoa <laughs> so I don't know um, them out with these things it's it's really interesting the reason i asked i think it's interesting to think for children that have these experiences is there a link to them being gifted in some way and that also can tap, tap into it easier yeah maybe uh, i mean he's he's got he's got a, um, a he's, he's a member of mensa i mean that's how clever he is um he also has asperger's and adhd my daughter is a very bright little soul. She's um, what you would call a highly sensitive child. Um, and she doesn't have any official diagnosis, but she's certainly not a neurotypical child. Um, she, she very much lives in her own world <laughs> that is uh, created within her own imagination. Um, she's a fabulous little soul. But um, yeah, they're both, they're both very unique individual people. And um, yeah, I do think that they, they probably do have some abilities outside of the realms of what we might consider normal. Yeah, there's actually a, a theory that I, I, I believe 
that um, people on the spectrum, autistic people and so forth, are actually the next step in our evolution and that they are quite gifted and that they are quite sensitive. Um, and I think that's pretty fascinating. The link between um, psychic sensitivity and people on the spectrum is extraordinary. And by the way, I, first I wanna um, also say um, thank you to Rachel Hanning because this entire topic this evening is because of her. Um, she's the one that came to me and was asking me questions. I thought, you know, this is a good thing for us to talk about. So see, if you guys come to us and ask us questions, we're gonna find a way to include it, I promise. Matter of fact, um, first off, our, our, how, how's everyone feeling about this particular topic? Does anybody else wanna chime in here? Erin, I know, won't yes, Erin right has said that her daughter has autism, who's 16, and she also is very sensitive to this thing, so just, I know Erin won't talk to the group, but she's popped it in the comments. Um, sorry, um, the girl, I don't know your name, Chromebook, um, you were waving to, to talk, so please, hi. Hi. Hey. Oh, you just muted yourself, honey. I am not tech savvy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Don't be silly. <laughs> My son, he's uh, three and a half actually, and he's autistic. And um, I've uh, he's just recently been diagnosed uh, uh, this past year. And uh, what I think is kind of neat is how he looked up at the sky at one point and said, plane, uh, go crash, I go to sleep. And I heard of a story of my grandfather, um, whom I never met, uh, remembered a past life where he was fighting in World War I and uh, his plane got shot down. He remembered that in a past life. That's what I heard from my father. So I don't know if I think that there's some sort of a connection or what, but he's very, very bright. He's on the higher spectrum, but he shows the symptoms of autism. So yeah, I just, that was, um, kind of like what I was hearing from bits and pieces of everyone talking earlier. It's like, oh, I, I got to say something. <laughs> so that's like, and that's yeah. why people do past life regressions. So we can go back and um, look at those blueprints that have come through other lives that we've been through. Yeah. So I don't know if there's some sort of connection between my son and the grandfather that I never met or what, because I was just thinking one time, I was like, huh, and then I'm like, huh. But I always thought of reincarnation. I never, when I was a little kid, I always thought that everyone, you know, when they passed away, they always came back as someone else. But I didn't even understand that. I didn't have the comprehension because I have a, a language processing disorder. I have a disorder, uh, for comprehension too. So, I mean, I didn't know if it was just me, but when I overheard my um, uh, grandmother, my dad, and my aunts talking about my grandfather I never met in a past life, uh, and his, him saying that he had a past life, I'm like, huh. I thought it was just me. So I don't know if it, that's a coincidence. And yeah, sorry. <laughs> don't apologize. It's interesting to he think that your grandfather talked about a past life experience that then now your son is talking about. So the one, the question that I would pose is, is your son possibly reliving the actual past life experience or is it there's a, some sort of psychic connection there that he is picking up that vibration, that imprint? So maybe he's not lived that life, but he's picking up the connection you know, psychically through what your grandfather went through, so on. Does that make sense, Chris? Yeah, we just had a case in uh, Poland, very similar to that, where a young boy who actually is autistic um, was channeling, it seems, um, 
it was either his father or grandfather. I think Catherine, you probably speak better to this. Uh, but this was not a good man that was coming through, and he was causing quite a bit of uh, trouble, violence, anger. Um, but he remembered. The boy was remembering things from a man that was dead before he was born. Yeah, it was his granddad, and his dad was uh, had an attachment on him. His dad was attached right. to him, and the grandfather was trying to take over the, 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 the boy, like actual um, possession of the boy. Yeah, it took an exorcism so, in this case. Yeah. Can I just give us a 10-minute warning? Um, and can we just maybe, if we, uh, sorry to sound abrupt, but could we maybe get to some of the questions just so we can get them covered? Sure. Uh, there's one question that Nicole had, yeah. and I, uh, Nicole Gaspert, and I wanted to make sure we got to that one. Um, she had asked, what's the difference between an EVP and a disembodied voice? And that's actually a terrific question. The truth is there's three different ways that spirits um, will communicate by voice. One is physically, and that's where it'll be picked up by a recording and it'll be picked up by your ears, okay? Uh, another one is telepathically. That's where it goes into your head. It sounds like you, you're hearing it, but a recording won't pick it up at all. And then the third way is energy manipulation of an electronic device. That's an EVP. That is where the voice is not heard by your ears, but is only through the manipulation of energy. That's it. Didn't take long. Um, Rachel has said her 13-year-old son definitely feels and sees things. Example, as a baby, he always had a pet or a friend. Now, old, now he's older, he gets very angry when she notices and tries to talk to him sensitively about it. Any advice? His dad and grandmother do have these powers, um, but keep them covered, i.e. they've told me, but no one else. Gotcha. And, and the boy is 13 years old. That's correct? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna turn this over to the psychics. Catherine? Um, okay, the, your boy is very gifted. Um, he's a sensitive, he's an empath, so his gifts are, are enhancing at the moment, especially at the age of 16. They're at the full potential. 13. 13. Oh, 13. Oh, is it 13 or, or 16? 13. 13. Okay, so they're rising and, and by the time he's 16, they will come to the full potential. Um, has he had, has he been speaking to that entity ever since he was a very young boy you said you say a very young boy yeah yes so it's been attached to it ever since she was it was born um so i believe it's an attachment so that um, has followed him ever since the time that he was really really young there are spirit are we it's, just, it's just lingering it's not hurting him or anything at the moment He's just lingering around him. So remember, spirit guides can be with us where they are with us since we're born. So if he's born as a gifted person, like for me, I, my gift was with me until I was nine and then left when I had a traumatic um, passing when I was 18. And then my gift was reawoken. Um, so spirit guides are with us from birth. So it may also be that, like me, he was talking to people that, or a person, which is a spirit guide, mm -hmm. and they show themselves as a way as children for us to be safe and understand pets, you know, other children. But it then develops to be that my main spirit guide was actually this gentleman who, at that point, probably would have given me fear because it's a grown man. So my mom always said there was a lady with me, and you know, and then I have a children friends. And I come from a huge family and I always have these other friends. So like you're saying, it's very much that he might find it quite confusing. I would allow him, rather than you trying to bring it up all the time, maybe just encourage that, you know, not encourage him to dive into it, but just letting him know that 
simple things like protection, you know, just like, you know, when the, some crystals, you know, this crystal is called your energy and it will help you keep you grounded, you know, maybe like an amethyst or a clear quartz or something that is easy for them to research and understand. Um, definitely not doing the, I'm not big on when they're that age to push them. I really feel it's about keeping it under control and then let them make his own choice. Uh, if it's still with him at this point, it's going to be probably with him for life. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, there's a wonderful page on Facebook uh, that I will recommend for everyone. It's Gifted and Empathic Children. And it's run by a colleague of ours. Uh, it goes by the name Shiva Rose. Uh, and I highly recommend if you've got children who are sensitive, that you check out that page. Uh, definitely go there and join. Karen said, made a really good point actually, um, would dad or grandmum be happy to talk to him about it? Um, but she did, um, sorry George, she did mention that the grandpa and granddad were suppressing, they didn't want to talk about it at all. About yeah, those, um, Karen was just asking in the comments as to maybe it would be, so definitely no, she should, Rachel's taking her head. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, Chris, can you repeat again what it's called, Erin asks, the page that you mentioned? Uh, empathic and Gifted Children, or Empathic Slash Gifted Children. We'll put up a link. Can I, um, something that I think is a good resource while we're talking about links, um, there's a, an, an amazing YouTube page that I, there's a lot of the mediums here that um, are, very knowledgeable in, in their um, information. They talk not just about spirit um, communication, but other things. It's a YouTube page called Spirits Voice. Um, so the word spirit with an S, and then the word voice. Um, the icon kind of looks a little bit like this. Um, and I'll see. Um, and I would check them out on YouTube. I tried to have the link ready and I didn't have, unfortunately, to post. But it's a phenomenal YouTube series. Mavis Patella is there, Paul Jacob is there, Andy Bing is there, um, Gordon Smith is there, to name a few of the great mediums that I know that their information is phenomenal. And they don't talk just about mediumship. Uh, they talk about all things to do with spirituality and so on. Um, so, Martin and Erin, did you take note? Because I could see you, you got that okay? YouTube.com for Credits Voice. Um, oh, well, Chromebook is waving. Hi, darling. Hi, my name is Becky. I just don't Hi, know how to, how to figure out how to do that. <laughs> so, uh, I heard you guys say empaths, and I, I think I, I've been told I'm an empath. Can that be passed on to my autistic son? Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, psychic abilities are genetic. Okay, I just was wondering because, uh, yeah, I've had like, several experiences, um, but it's like I don't see them, I feel them. I could feel um, if someone just passed away. Uh, they come to me, I get like that. Uh, like a not a heaviness, but like more like a um, what's the word? Uh, ang like an anxiety, and emotion, and yep. And I'm going to have to be really rude and cut you short because we are about to get cut off. Our time limit has come up. So can you please join us next Monday and we can pick this up? Um, and can you just cover that a little bit more because I just don't want us to be cut short. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. Because we only have a 40 minute limit and we're just about to run out of time. Um, Bye. Please join us every Monday um, at the same time, everyone. I'm George the Medium. You can hit me up at georgemedium.com. Please check out the Warren Legacy Foundation for Paranormal Research on Facebook. Catherine Sorellos, you can get her on Facebook. And the warrenfiles.com. Thank you, everyone, and see you next week. Yeah. Also check out the Warren files on the Fear Realm Network, please. Thank you. I guess I'm leaving. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye, George.